This screencast talks about two algorithms that partition around a pivot. What partition around a pivot means is that you have some set of comparable elements, just think of numbers, and you have a particular number the, called the pivot, and what you want to do is break the array, or rearrange the array, so that numbers less than the pivot are to its come before it, and numbers greater than the pivot come after it. This is a key step in implementing both quick sort and quick select. Um, and why is that important? As you probably know, quick sort is the sorting algorithm choice for many situations because it's both fast and in place, so it doesn't require more than a constant amount of uh, additional storage. And then selection is an important algorithm for finding the, an order statistic, the case smallest or largest item in a data set. It's true that you could just sort, support, sort the data in n log n time and then you'd be able to access the case smallest or largest element in constant time. But if you only have to do that a few times, then you're better off using something like quick select, which will find the case smallest item in linear time. On this slide, you can see a little more clearly what the idea of partitioning around a pivot is. Um, the idea is going to be that we're going to select some pivoting element, and for right now, I'll be vague about how we do that efficiently so that the, the partitioning is effective. But then we rearrange all the elements so that the first positions contain things that are smaller than or equal to the pivot, and the remaining elements to the right of the pivot are bigger than or equal to the pivot. Then we will exchange the pivots usually either at the beginning or the end of the array. So then we'll exchange the pivot into the middle location. And then if we're doing quick sort, what we're able to do is we're able to sort the two subarrays recursively. This is, again, very efficient. You can compare it to merge sort, um, although in merge sort you're guaranteed that you can split the array in the middle. Um, when we talk about quick sort, we'll see um, the important implications of not being able to do that. But for right now, the idea is smaller elements over here, larger elements over here, uh, the pivot element in the middle. And then for quick sort, you just sort these other arrays. And you can see this enables quick sort to be able to sort in place. Here's a picture of that in a little more detail. Uh, don't worry about where exactly things are coming from here, but you start out with this array, then you partition it, so you get an array that looks like this. So these elements are all less than or equal to 8. These are bigger than or equal to 8. Then you partition this subarray, and you do 6, say, for example, and you get these elements less than or equal to 6, this element bigger than 6, partition this array, boom, then finally you get down to just two elements. You can just sort those, and then once you've sorted those, they'll be in these positions in the array. Notice the four is already in that position in the array. Then once you sort the five, which of course is five, that's, you get that. Um, you come back up here, you've got, now you've got up through five, in their proper positions, six is also in its proper position, and seven is in the proper position. Now, then you get to eight. This is sort of where the most more interesting part is. So now this first set is all in order. It's correct. And then you go through the partitioning on the, on the right. So that's the idea when we do the quick sort uh, algorithm in more detail in a later screencast. There are two main partitioning algorithms. Um, there's a one-directional scanning algorithm called Lemudo's partitioning algorithm, and it is easier to implement correctly, uh, but slightly less efficient in certain, cer certain circumstances than Hoare's partitioning algorithm, uh, which is a two-directional scan. And we'll, you'll see the difference. I'm going to spend most of the time here on the one-directional scan because it's easier to get correctly. Um, but if you really need uh, to do an efficient sorting algorithm, uh, well, my first suggestion would be find a sorting algorithm that's efficient for your use, probably implemented with HORS partitioning algorithm. If you have to write your own, then I'd say really stick to Lamudo. 
So how does Lemuto's partitioning algorithm work? Let's start out with sort of the middle, you're going from being in the middle of the algorithm. Here's the picture that we want to have. We want to have the partitioning element at the beginning. Now, it, sometimes you'll see the implementation and what the partitioning element at the end. It really doesn't change things much. Um, and then you'll have a section of the array that's already determined to be uh, contain only elements that are less than p, and another section of the array that has elements bigger than or equal to p. And the idea is that at each iteration of a loop, you're going to increase the area by one cell. And so it will either be something that's bigger than or equal to p, in which case you really won't have to do much of anything, but increment i, which indicates where the next element that has to be processed is going to be. Or if it's less than p, then you'll swap it and move s over and then finally increment i. So in other words, at each iteration, the unknown section is decreased by one element. And again, that can happen either by just if the, if the element that is being processed is bigger than or equal to p, then all you need to do is increment i, whereas if the element is um, less than p, then you have to increment s, do a swap, and then increment i. And you'll see that when we look at the code. Once you're done doing this, then you just need to switch the partition with the last element, which is indexed by s, um, and so that the partitioning element is in the mid split position in the middle. I need to say there are lots of variations. You'll see this implemented in a lot of different ways, um, depending on how you arrange these indices to keep track of things, uh, or where whether p goes at the beginning or the end. But the key idea is that at each step, you grow this known section by one uh, element and decrease the unknown element by uh, uh, the unknown X section by one element. So here's some pseudocode. Um, we start out, we let the partitioning element being the leftmost element in the array that we're going to partition. Um, and then we let i go from left one to right. And this is exactly what I described in the last uh, slide. And finally, again, this last line here um, swaps the partitioning element with the middle position in the, uh, in the final array. Two things to notice here. One is we just return the index of where the partitioning element is. And the second thing is notice how we're working wi within an arbitrary portion of an array, left to right, that allows us to do this partitioning in place and then um, and work in terms of so it works well with in terms of quicksort. So this slide shows uh, Lamudo's partitioning algorithm, the one-dimensional scanning partitioning algorithm, in some detail. So we start out S being this is the left, and the partitioning element is four, and I is the first unprocessed element, the one we don't know, and so what happens, this is smaller than 4. So in this case, what we have to do is we have to swap it with itself. Increment, well, we have to increment S, swap it with itself, and then we increment I. Now, as we go across, we don't have to do anything until we run into some number that's less than 4. That's going to be 2. So that gives us this. Then what do we do? We increment I. So we put S here, then we swap the 2 with the 10, so the 2's in here, and then we increment I. And then I doesn't find any more, we don't find any other numbers smaller than 4, and so S is here, so we've fallen out of the loop at this point, and now all we do is we swap the partitioning element with the element in position S. And we get this in this uh, final line. And this is exactly what we want, right? The partitioning elements here, all the elements less than the partitioning element are to the left. 
and all the elements bigger than or equal to the partitioning element are to the right. Now we'll continue on and partition the back half of the array now. And so now our partitioning element is going to be 8. Um, and we'll let i, again, i get set to left plus 1. So left plus 1. We look again at 7 is less than 8. So we're going to increment s. Uh, we swap 7 with itself. And then we increment i. So now we increment i, check the next pos position, that's 12, that's bigger than 8, uh, 9, that's bigger than 8, 10, that's bigger than 8, 15, that's bigger than 8, and then finally i basically drops off the end. And so now all we need to do is swap the pivot element with the item that's contained in the s slot. And so we get this picture where the partitioning element is now has elements that are smaller to it than it to its left and only elements that are bigger than or equal to it to its right. That should give you a good overview of one directional scanning. Uh, make sure you can try this out on an array of your own and make sure that step by step you understand how the algorithm works. Briefly I want to talk about two directional partitioning. The idea is shown on this slide. We're going to have um, a low index and a high index, just like we did for one directional scanning. Uh, we'll put the partitioning element over here, low. Sometimes we'll put a flag here, could be the partitioning element to make sure we don't run off the end of the high end of the array. And what we're going to do is first we'll increment low and move across until we find something that's bigger than or equal to V. And then we'll decrement j until we find something that's less than or equal to v, and then we'll swap. And we keep doing this until i and j cross, and then we move the partitioning element in. The, um, this picture comes from Princeton, and on the next slide I'll show you some code uh, also from Princeton, and you can look at that in a little more detail to check what's going on. But the idea is, again, is pretty straightforward. Now we have two indices, we move them until it's, we find elements that need to be moved, and then we swap those elements. This slide so shows some more detailed pseudocode of what's going on with two-directional partitioning. Um, notice what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do something called medium of three, which takes three entries. Um, from the array and it lets the pivot be the middle entry. This is important for trying to avoid uh, degenerate situations where quick sort won't um, perform efficiently. But the idea is just what I said in the previous slide, namely we're going to, i is the index on the left side of the array and we're going to index that, increase that, increment that until ai is bigger than or equal to pivot then we're going to let j be decremented until aj is less than or equal to pivot, and then we're going to swap them. And then finally, in the end, we're going to move the pivot into the uh, center position. This is difficult to get correct for a long time. There were lots of bad implementations out there. You still see some implementations in books where under certain circumstances, say for example when all the elements are the same, um, either I or J will run off the end of the array. Um, so again, it's it's important to, um, if you're going to use two-directional partitioning or his algorithm, make sure that you get it correct. Ideally, you'll just be able to use someone else's code that's already been sufficiently tested and proven to be correct. The uh, Princeton website for uh, their algorithms course contains um, a lot of resources about quick sort and sorting in general. Uh, Professor Sedgwick there is a world-renowned expert on sorting, and so you can trust uh, what he says about this area. And you can see this is a version of in Java of uh, part, uh, part two-directional partitioning. So this has just been a brief introduction to partitioning. You can see the algorithm is um, not all that complex. 
um, especially the one directional scan. And uh, but it's important. It's lightning fast. It's linear time, and it does it in place. And those are keys for making both quick sort and quick select be efficient.